and uh, maximize your press coverage potential at your next event. And so the topic for today is going to be um, on digital marketing in terms of influencer marketing, as well as providing uh, PR strategies and tactics for whether it be your next event here in Taiwan or abroad. Um, this is just a little background information about me, but I usually just skip this and I go into this part, which sort of illustrates sort of my journey in these past, well, since, uh, since I've been born. The first phase is, uh, you know, I was born in Taiwan. Uh, I, as you can see, uh, that, that's my sister, that's me, and I grew up from a very traditional family. And at the age of eight, I actually went to the United States with my family. Uh, sort of follow the American dream. Uh, and about 2002, about close to 15 years ago, I actually decided to come back to Taiwan or even here in Asia uh, to pursue my career. And so the past, I would say maybe 12 years or so, I've been working in the corporate. Uh, so unlike some of the startup founders, uh, I didn't really take this leap right out of school when I graduated from Berkeley, but I actually went through the route of working in the corporate and then, uh, in fact, going through the corporate uh, process. And then about three or four years ago, I started a company called Spark Amplify. And that's uh, uh, a portion of it will be presented here at today's presentation. But basically, like any startup founder, we're always looking for <coughs> to create the next unicorn, right? So that's ultimately my dream as well. Q&A, um, you know, since we are at a tech event, so we try to be a little bit more techy. So instead of just a paper Q&A, uh, you guys can uh, go on to slido.com, type in 5566, and then you can just leave questions that you may have. So uh, there's gonna be three sections to this. And we're probably not going to stop at every section because we only have about an hour and a half and I don't want to keep you guys longer than you have to. So if you do have any questions during the time, uh, just you know, list it on there and then we'll you know, go through it one by one at the end of the uh, presentation. So an overview, you know, before we dive into some of the topics that we'll be talking about, just give you an overview. Uh, this is what it feels like. Uh, especially for startups, uh, you know, when you get 200, per, you know, 250 percent more press coverage at your next event, and hopefully that's my goal. You know, after today's event, you guys will eventually feel like this at your next event as well. Um, and like I said today, we're going to spend some time talking about influence marketing, which is currently one of the trending uh, digital marketing uh, techniques uh, here and abroad. And um, Based on some of the outreach strategies, we're going to use CES as a case study, and it is one of the events that's going to be coming up soon in January. And at CES, it's definitely one of the largest uh, startup events on the planet. Actually, it's got this year it's going to have 1,200 startups from 42 countries, from uh, over 32 categories. But more importantly, this is the biggest event in terms of media as well there's going to be over 8,000 media professionals attending this event. So you can think of it as, in the past, let's say if you were to try to reach out to this media, uh, it would basically have to be through via, let's say, virtual email and things of that nature. But if you're at this event, you're going to actually have an opportunity to, to meet them in person, which a lot of times is a critical component in terms of getting media placements. And so, and so the second component, obviously, well, yeah, we're going to look at some of the press, you know, the PR strategies. And lastly, we're just going to spend about 20 minutes just to go over what we try to solve uh, with Spark Amplify, which is a SaaS solution, a platform that basically takes away all the, the pain points of doing this and hopefully allowing you guys to do what you guys are good at, which is tell your story, and we put the right people in front of you. Okay, and so this portion of it, my colleague Candy will give you guys a brief um, sort of a run through on what you can expect. And of course, you know, currently we are providing a free trials. So after this event, if you guys are interested or, you know, yeah, you guys can always register and uh, sort of take a test drive. 
So, uh, you know, with our uh, platform, you know, we, the key features, we try to, with your brand, build an impression, a memorable impression in front of these media so that they remember you through a Facebook-like profile. So instead of a traditional, you know, press kit folder structure. And also we, we are very data driven. So currently there's about 8,000 media influencers on our database. So we try to put the right people in front of you and uh, let you guys do your work. And also, instead of you having to do the research part of it, our, our AI model actually does that for you. So hopefully, uh, you know, provide you the accuracy as well as the right people so you're not sort of just email blasted. And, you know, just recently uh, at Meet Taipei, we actually did this world first on the Man Press Conference, which uh, we were able to connect uh, international as well as domestic startups to media all over the world. And basically what this solves is the physical problem of having press conferences where usually, you know, uh, press and the organizer needs to be at one physical location. But with this now, you can actually do it, you know, on demand so they can see, let's say if you have a startup, they can actually see your story when they need to and when they want to. So anyway, here's the agenda. And like I said, I'm going to try to end this on time, uh, which I'm already a little bit over already. But anyway, uh, yeah, we'll definitely speed it up towards the back. But the key components, the three parts, you know, the art of asking, influencer marketing, uh, the key PR strategies, using CES 2019 as a case study, and also doing a, a short intro uh, overview on Spark Amplify. Okay, so the art of asking, influencer marketing. Um, usually when we think of digital marketing, we usually the first thing that we think of are pay-per-click ads, right? Uh, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, things of that nature. Um, however, as we know, you know, ad costs are going up uh, exponentially, actually. And, uh, and in fact, conversion rates are down and things of that nature. And, so, and also, Facebook, people are turning away from Facebook, right? As you know, a lot of the younger generations, the millennials, they're moving away from Facebook uh, because their parents are on it. <laughs> And so, in fact, you know, ads nowadays, usually the only people who's making money is not the people who's placing the ads, okay? It's actually Facebook themselves, okay? And furthermore, I'm pretty sure, you know, you all have Facebook, right? Now, every four or five posts, it is an ad. So, it is somewhat turning away people. And so, aside from using pay-per-click ads, are there any other options in terms of targeting or identifying your target audience? And so, this is what I'm talking today, you know, influencer marketing. How can we utilize influencer marketing to target potential users? And so, this is, I'm not sure if you guys used Google Trends before, but if you look at, uh, you know, Google Trends, basically they provide, they open up, you know, their Google searches in terms of keywords and thing, that type of things, and then they basically allow you to take a look at, you know, what are some of the common, SE, you know, keywords that are being searched. And when you look at these past couple of uh, years, Influencer marketing has been on the rise, meaning that either people are contributing uh, topics on influencer marketing, or people are looking for information to learn more about influencer marketing. And so it is definitely, from this perspective, it is an trending topic. In fact, you know, Google Trend actually predicted uh, uh, influenza, well, yeah, I think some sort of uh, spread the Z based on the same topic. So this has some basis to it. So what is influencer marketing? So influencer marketing focuses on utilizing influential people, obviously, from the name, to share a brand's message through their, their chosen audience. So you can think of it as basically, instead of going directly telling your message to your customers, you indirectly go through it through some sort of an individual that has a clout or an audience that potentially, in some ways, are more persuasive in, in convincing them, right? So you go indirectly through this individual to tell your message. And who does this the, the best is Apple. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people here are Apple users, right? Apple fans, fanatics, me too. I use Apple as well. Uh, so Tim Cook, uh, you know, every year, September, uh, they have this WWDC uh, event, right? Showcasing their newest 
iPhones, Macs, products, right? And if you notice, if, okay, if you're like me, even though sometimes I, hear, uh, I am here in Taiwan, sometimes I'm in the States, but when I'm here in Taiwan, I, I still stay up and watch this thing. Um, and when you look at the video, you see a lot of people with their computers on it. A lot of them are journalists, media, influencers. They're basically live amplifying this message to their audience simultaneously. And so what they do good, very good at is they, they identify these journalists and social influencers. And uh, in fact, through their amplifying or their message, they get to get the news across to the mass market. So this is an example how Apple uses it, right? And so, of course, you know, we're not an Apple. Yeah, we're not Apple, we're not, you know, Google. But in some ways, this is sort of what we're trying to achieve as well through influence marketing. And so the title of influencers that you see, there are many, uh, and even, you know, like pets. Yeah, I know like there's a chihuahua in, uh, in the States that uh, is also an influencer because it has like 500,000 uh, followers, right? So it doesn't have to be people, okay? It could be animals, it could be pets, it could be, you know, a lot of things. Um, but the type of influencers that you commonly see are, for example, Gary is an expert in digital marketing, right? These are people that sort of are experts in a certain field, and so they obviously also have an audience base that sort of follow them and in fact uh, agree with what, you know, what they're saying as well, right? And there's also like the brand advocates, right? They're, they're just specifically advocating for a specific brand, you know, sort of from a monetary uh, basis. And there's also the celebrities, right? There's the Rihanna's, there's the LeBron James, there's the Kobe, things of that nature. And then there's also the journalists, you know, the people that are consistently putting out content, uh, putting out whether it be through their social media, whether it be through articles. They're putting out content, uh, sharing whatever they see at events, what they believe in, and basically what they're, uh, you know, they're catering towards their audience, right? That's their ultimate uh, goal. And so today, based, you know, with the influencer marketing, we're, we're going to be mainly based on sort of targeting the media influencers. Okay, because those are what we're talking about, you know, how to do PR. So these other ones, we'll leave it you know, for another day. Now, um, like I said, there's many, many types of these type of influencers, right? So how do you actually know which ones are right for you? Um, you could be a lifestyle, maybe a fashion product. You could be a tech SaaS platform. You could be, you know, a hardware, uh, IoT fitness, wearable, it could be all sorts of things, right? So when your product options are varied, who are the right ones that are, that are right for you? And so basically, this is what we use uh, as a sort of a selection criteria, right? So, and, and this is what we use based on our, our algorithm, how we actually recommend the ones, the right ones to you. We look at three factors, we look at reach. Uh, basically, reach equals their fan base. How many people do they have following them, right? So basically, what it means is that when they post something or when they write something, this many amount of people will at least have that impression of seeing, or potentially seeing your message. Relevance is looking at how relevant, you know, because like I said, right, uh, not every influencer is for every single product, right? If you are, let's say, a fashion product, you're probably not gonna go to a tech uh, geek. Yeah, you're, uh, you're probably gonna go to someone that's more fashion related, because that's more aligned with what you're trying to, the message that you're trying to persuade, you know, uh, convince your customers. So there has to be that alliance, right? Uh, so the relevance is really important. And also, resonance, meaning that, you know, these influencers that you identified, how, how much engagement do they have with their fan base, right? So there could be a person that has a million followers, but potentially their fans are not are not engaging. They're 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 not you know liking what they, he writes or not uh, sharing or not commenting. So in essence, if you select this person as your influencer, there's not going to be too much engagement with your message as well. So you got to look for those that have resonance in terms of their audience. Uh, as well, and so when you sort of put these three together, yeah, you see this overlap section, uh, section which is basically who you should identify. Uh, those people that not only satisfies the reach, but also 
it aligns with your brand product message, but more importantly, the message that's being put out, there will be some resonance in the sense of that social virality. So this um, is a survey or statistics that was uh, performed by Adweek, I think, I believe it was last year, and they, uh, they, they did a survey and you know, a lot of, you know, about 60, about 70% of the brands are looking to run influencer marketing for this next campaign year, uh, or next fiscal year. And so as you can see, brands are also looking for other ways. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are also doing ads, pay-per-click ads and you know, things of that nature, but they're also looking at how to reallocate their budget to do other things as well. Uh, and so influencer marketing it is definitely something that they're looking at. And of course, like we all know, right? Yeah, you know, ninety-two percent of the consumers trust recommendations from other people more than the brands themselves, right? So, for example, let's say if you're buying a product, you're probably not going to not going to go to vendor site. Yeah, of course, yeah, you might look at you know the specs, the pricing, but in terms of what's going to sort of move the needle in terms of uh, affecting your decision, you're probably going to be looking at other information other than the you know the manufacturer side. You're probably going to go look at forums. You're going to look at you know articles that's written about uh, or reviews um, that type of information, right? So same thing, you know, for us, you know, with our uh, wh uh, whether it be you're currently working on a startup or if you have a specific product, it's about building your social proof, right? Like it said here, I think this is a a picture that I took at a licensing show, which was about a year or two ago. And this, I'm not sure if you guys are from the States, you probably heard of this, it's a grumpy cat. And they're licensing this cat, essentially, right? And, uh, and what's interesting is when you look at this poster board, it's all about social proof. It's all about how many fans that they have on social media, how many views on YouTube, how many, for example, the media, who's already talking about us. Right, so that's sort of building that social proof, right? You know, especially with uh, uh, startups like us, sometimes we don't have the ad budget like, let's say, a Coca-Cola or a Google. So we need these participants to sort of amplify our message, and so that's where actually the name Spark Amplify came from. You know, we want to be able to help you identify these individuals that potentially may be interested in your story, and let you do what you do good at, which is tell your story and help you amplify it through different, let's say, uh, audience space. And of course, through influencer marketing, aside from building that social proof, it's also about identifying and engaging early adopters. And my perfect you know, uh, picture of an early adopter are these people. You know, the people that usually line up the day before, or even you know, a couple days before, for the release of a new iPhone product, right? These are gung-ho people. People are just, you know, not only are they spending potentially a third of their salary buying this thing, but they're also advocating it. You know, they're trying to convince other people to buy this thing. Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. I did not use iPhone when, they, when, when Steve Jobs first launched it because I was like, come on, you know, how can a person that, you know, how can a company that makes computers know how to make a phone, right? So I was one of those bystanders that sort of was, you know, sort of standing on the fence. But, you know, as time goes by, there's a lot of these people out there, and they're spreading the words, and the more you know, yeah, the next thing you know, you're like, okay, well, let's give it a try. And once you give it a try, you know, I, yeah, so I've been using it since. <laughs> so, why do I say, uh, yeah, you can identify early, you know, uh, uh, adopters using media influencers because, like I said, they have their own audience base. So, for example, let's say if you were able to reach out to one of these media influencers that potentially are key opinion leaders on a specific domain space that overlaps on what you're doing, right? So, you can essentially think about the people that's following this media professional or this individual are people that potentially may be interested in your service or product. Now, the people that you identify through this process, it's going to be a little bit different than, let's say, when you identify them through ads, right? Ads are usually my sense of, you know, I identify using ads. 
are usually looking for promotions, right? There's a discount, a 20% discount. Woohoo, yeah, yeah, let's buy right now. But those are not the early adopters that you want. Those are essentially people are that are looking out, you know, for a discount or for a, you know, some sort of rebate. But for you, for, for a startup, what you guys need are these people that it doesn't even matter if it's costing a lot or, yeah, they really believe in the product that you're building. They really believe in the pain point that you're trying to solve. These are the people that's going to move the needle and help you build that market traction. So, I think we're on time. Okay, yeah, I think we are. So, that's sort of just a quick 10, 15 minutes on the influencer marketing. Um, with the key PR strategies, like I said, we're using CES uh, as a case study, but it can be applied to any event. Like I know this week there's slush at Helsinki that's going on that we're working with some of the startups. Uh, there was uh, an event at TC uh, Tech Crunch Berlin that we were working with some of the startups. I mean, the events could be big, it could be small, it could be even, it doesn't even have to be an event. It could be a, let's say, a demo day. If you're trying to do some presentation, it could be that type of, it just has to be something where you're doing something potentially to, whether to share your product or for a new, new release, whatever, that could be a time to reach out to media. So, with CS, I mean, I'm not sure how many here have been to CS or will be going to CS. Okay, so there's gonna be two, but yeah, I hope all of you, one of these days, get a chance to go. It's definitely a, uh, a very memorable experience. You get scenes like this, right? You know, there's crowds of people. And this is literally what you see every day, okay? And with the, some of the figures I was giving you, right? There's gonna be about 1,200 startups. There's gonna be about 4,000. Uh, overall, there's gonna be about five, four or 5,000 exhibitors. There's gonna be about 8,000 media professionals. And uh, aside from that, there's gonna be, I would say about 50, 60, 70,000 attendees. So you are basically looking at a four day event that's gonna be packed with, let's say, close to about 100,000 people. Okay, and so you're not, you know, there's not going to be too many events like that. Uh, now, like I said, you know, with that many people, how can you identify the media, right? I mean, media is definitely one of the goals or the objectives for this event. Media is one, and there may be like, yeah, you want to line up some VCs, or you might want to have some strategic partnerships or things of that nature. But, um, yeah, so with PR, what's a good PR strategy, right? So... We usually preach, I mean, involves online and offline activities, right? So online usually involves what can you do before the event, right? So online, that's where it goes virtual, right? So you can do it, you know, before the event, you can reach out to them, do the necessary preparation. And when you combine that with your offline events, then you have momentum in a way that, you know, not only are you only meeting this person virtually, but you're also meeting them physically because you have a, let's say, a booth or... Uh, things of that nature, but also with offline, you know, with CES, with a lot of these events, there's a lot of uh, surrounding events as well. Like for example, for CES, there's like unveil, there's press conferences you could attend to. So don't re you know, don't reinvent the wheel. You know, press they're very selective. You know, they their 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 time is very precious, right? So don't try to create your own crowd. Follow the crowd, or you know, follow where they are, and then meet them where they happen to be. I think that's the key. Right, so online, do the preparation. Offline, find find where they are and go meet them in person, right? So that sort of, in some ways, build that relationship, not only virtually, but also physically. Put in the effort to do the research. I mean, you know, it's the same thing, right? So uh, if two strangers, if you know them a little bit more, you got have a better chance. Okay, it's like going on a blind date, right? Okay, if, if, if you go on a blind date without doing some research, potentially on Tinder or whatever, most likely you're probably not gonna get a second date. But if you do some research about who, you know, what this person does and what he, what he or she likes, there may be a good chance that you might get a second date. So it's the same thing, do, do, do the research, build that relationship before you need it, right? Because a lot of times, you know, we're like always, uh, in Chinese, there's a, the use of bao jiao, right? Just a, when I need it, do, I'm gonna, yeah, do I need it right now? But that's not how relationships are, are built. Yeah, you gotta start early, potentially. You know, because at the end of the day, this is a relationship process. It's not something where you only need them right now. 
you may need them down the road when you're doing your second release, when you have a different product. Yeah, so build that relationship before you need it, and when in need, help out benefit them. You know, journalism is a you know it's a hard job. You know, they're always running on deadlines. They want to cater to their audience. So in some ways, you know, give them a story that only they can you know like a story embargo where they can share it only exclusively from them, or maybe do a discount exclusively for their audience. Those are things that you can benefit them to help them build their audience. <laughs> and of course, like I said, tell your story the way you know how, you know, and that's the most genuine and the most authentic. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of the brands now they go with PR agencies, and uh, and we do that too as well. But to be honest, we're not going to know as much as the founders or the the product creators. So you guys have gone through the process. You. The, the, the story that you guys present is a story that they want to hear because that's the story that they want to present to their audience. So tell your story the way you know how. And like I said, you know, research is a pain, but it's a must. You have to do it, right? So know their beat. Beat is basically what's their interest. What do they usually write, right? Yeah, you gotta, like I said, if someone's always writing about fitness, IoT sports, you're not gonna give them something on fashion. Okay, that's not their forte, there's not, that's not their interest, right? So you gotta know their beat. Study their audience. Know who their audience are, because like I said, they're serving their audience. So if their audience are Apple lovers, then if your product is something that sort of enhances the overall Apple, let's say Mac or iPhone experience, then he or she wants to hear about it. Because he or she wants to be able to share that information with their readers, right? So know their audience and and of course, I mean, it's always good to look at you know similar products because you know look for reporters that are covering your. Yeah, I don't like to use the word competitors because it's just, that's a negative connotation. But similar products, right? Because if they're willing to report on their product, then if you have an advantage or some sort of a different angle to it, he or she may be interested in learning more about. It. Let's step away from the list. Let's identify the different personas that's underneath these names, right? Who are these people? Are they tech journalists? Are they bloggers? Are they editors? You know, this will help you better understand what type of information are they looking for, right? So instead of just treating them as faceless email lists, let's identify the persona and then let's craft a message that's tailored and targeted to these personas. So instead of just an email list, what you get now, you can segment. You can do target segmentation. You can actually send out messages that's more relevant to this persona. So in essence, although we're not writing this on a personal to person basis, but from a receiving end, when they receive your message, it doesn't look like it's a shotgun approach, a mass email, but it looks like, wow, you've actually taken some time to understand who I am, and so, Maybe I should spend some time looking at your content as well. So timing is everything. Just with, just as with anything, right? Uh, you know, even with the success of a startup, sometimes it's about timing too. Sometimes I think timing is more important than uh, you know uh, the other criteria. I think timing and luck sometimes plays a major component to a success of a startup. But timing it is everything because. When you're approaching these media influencers, there needs to be a reason. I mean, if it's just run of the mill, you know, the same old thing, they're like, why are you talking to me about this right now? There's, you know, because article placements, media placements, it's all about, in some ways, I like to put it, it's about fireworks, right? So they want to be able to be the exclusive, they want to be able to share something that potentially no one else knows about it yet. So timing is everything, meaning that it has to be event driven. If you're participating in an event, that's a good time. And media would be interested in potentially learning more about what you're doing. And so, yeah, you probably see this banner right here, right? These are all logos I'm pretty sure we all want to be, potentially one of these days, uh, be mentioned in. And, uh, However, I'm gonna be very honest with you. <laughs> Probably a lot of us are not gonna have that opportunity because this, in some ways, it is 
what I consider to be wish list. But however, it doesn't mean it's almost yeah. But it doesn't mean it's impossible because there's a process, like I said, right? And I consider that to be sort of the honey pot technique. What this means is that instead of directly going at these, which we all want, right? But just keep in mind, like these people, they every day they probably receive hundreds of emails pitching their stories, right? And I don't know, they have a lot of you know to choose from too. So so unless your product is definitely something out there, but uh, but also at the same time, you know, when I say the honeypot technique, it's about building up that 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 proof, right? So instead of directly attacking these bigger ones, why not go through some of the more niche ones, the ones that potentially might be even more effective because they're niche, because those are potentially the audience base are going to be more tailored to you know the early adopters that you're looking at, and also at the same time, I mean, for them when they do look at your let's say. Uh, pitch email, right? The first thing they do, they're probably going to go on the web and look for information about you, right? But if you're just always attacking these, and these are very difficult, there's probably not much written about you. So they don't want to be the guinea pig, right? So instead, what you need to do is go through these smaller stepping stones in the sense of get in chips. You know, so at least when they're on the Google searching about you, they're like, wow. Man. And also sometimes, I mean, go through with guest posting. Go for guest posting sometimes is good too. Yeah, you can actually write your own and then post it on different, you know, blogs, right? And they have, you know, domain authority. So at least on the search results, yeah, you're gonna start showing up stuff, right? So when these bigger ones are looking at, you know, searching, they're gonna say, wow, yeah, there's people talking about it. And yeah, maybe I should give you some, you know, give some time looking at your stuff.